Hi, this is Bob. Doing a little work on my Heathkit SS9000 here again, and I got a few tips here today. This is the, the ALC circuit board. And one of the things you're going to find out if you read the schematic carefully and if you look in your service manual carefully, they refer to the ALC board and the external ALC board. They get those mixed up. So be careful when you're doing the adjustments for the ALC board. Be sure that you're going to the right one. The external ALC board is the little bitty one located right down here. That's the external ALC board. That's for ALC coming in for a linear amplifier. The internal ALC board is right here. And they get those confused on the manual. They got them mixed up. Now, when you're working on this ALC board, they tell you to clip a clip lead to the top of diode D1903, right there. That's point A. Well, what you can do, and what I've done, because it is so easy when you pry this out to short it out on something, and I've done it over and over. So what I've started doing with these is I will loosen up the hardware on the back, it's pretty easy to do. You loosen this up right here, and you loosen the screw here, and there's four screws on the back that hold that plate on the back of the 9000. Uh, you take those out, and you can move that panel away, and you can solder. Then you can move this stuff around, and you can solder a small wire on here and stick it up maybe, maybe a half an inch and have a little bare end on it. And then when I'm done, I fold it over, fold the wire over, and shove a little piece of tubing on it. Here it is right here. That's connected to point A, so I don't have to mess with this anymore. And I think that's a good thing to do. Because you can short things out, you can ruin a part or two that way. Now, I wanted to talk to you too about this resistor right here. This is uh, R619. It's a 39 ohm 5 watt resistor. And this one was running very, very hot. I mean extremely hot. Uh, after uh, I turned the rig on for just a couple of minutes and boy that thing would be just scalding hot. So what I found after tracing things around here and, and one time I put my ohmmeter on ground here and then put it onto this tab of the transistor right here I found that this was shorted. The little uh, wafer, insulating wafer, thin wafer thing under the transistor this piece right here had shorted out to ground and that's because the corners of this transistor tab back here will punch through so a new wafer and all I used a different kind of wafer I used uh, the gray stuff which uh, I don't know where you can get it somebody gave me a couple of these are gray little gray tabs but they don't need to have the uh, the uh, heat sink grease put onto them it's impregnated in the material. Anyhow, that works really neat. But the other kind will work too. And if you just take it off and turn it over, flip it over so that the transistor is contacting it differently. And when you tighten this screw up, use a very, very small screwdriver so that you don't over tighten it. Like a jeweler screwdriver with a Phillips on it. And you don't want it any tighter than that. And I put a tiny dab of clear nail polish on the nut and the bolt right back here so that it doesn't come loose. Okay, now this here is uh, another thing I wanted to talk to you about is on this external ALC board. There's a little yellow wire plugs in right here. Got to be real careful not to forget that guys. If you leave that wire off you won't get any output. And I messed around here for a couple hours trying to find out why I didn't have any output. It was that yellow wire crazy thing. Now your SS9000 when you change bands rock the switch a little bit. Rock the switch a little bit because they sometimes don't center right and you got four different you got four different switches here one two three four and there's a dual switch up in here all these have to line up for it to work. So rock the switch a little bit when you change bands. Now another thing, this little transistor right here was running really really hot. 
that transistor was installed on the board at the factory over this green paint. The paint is on there to help with the soldering process. Well, that's great, but it doesn't help the heat sinking at all. So I removed that transistor. I, I had the board out. I unsoldered the transistor, removed it, and the mica washer. Then I took this little screwdriver and I scraped the paint off on the board underneath that transistor. Then I put it all back together with some fresh heat sink compound, the white stuff, and that runs nice and cool now. So that's something that you want to be aware of. If it runs really hot, you really don't have to take it off the board like that unless you have the board out already because you can just push one of those little round heat sinks down on that and that'll do the same thing for you. You don't have to take it apart. And what else do you want to talk about here? Also, uh, aligning the band switch. You know, if you have to take this assembly off here, the final assembly, if you have to take this off, You've got some adjustment here where this will slide up and down in here. When you loosen this screw and this screw, you can slide that up and down. And you have some adjustment there to help you with aligning things for your coupling right in here. And you also have adjustments like that on the back when you put it together. So these are for aligning the band switch. And what I do is I stick that shaft into the coupling and then I move this up and down until I see that the shaft is nice and loose in there. Then I know I've got it centered. Then I tighten the screws. It's a little tricky, but it's pretty easy to do. Okay. And the idle current adjustment pots. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but these idle current pots, here's the one for the, uh, here's the one here for the uh, driver. And the one here for the final is right over here. But they, to me, they work backwards. They tell you to uh, screw them all the way uh, out. Was it all the way? You want to screw them all the way in. Uh, I'm not certain what the instructions are, but you want to screw those all the way in clockwise. And, and I can hear them click. If you listen carefully and it's quiet, you can screw them all the way in and they'll go click, click, click when they reach the end because they are 20 turn pots they go a long ways so you want to screw those all the way in and then you screw them out when you adjust the idle current so uh, I just thought I would mention that uh, because that to me seems backwards uh, I would think you would screw them all the way out and they would be at zero current and you screw them in and the current will increase but it's backwards you want to screw them all the way in and then screw them out counterclockwise and the current will go up now one thing to remember when you do that you got to turn them several turns they are a 20 turn pot so you have to turn those quite a few turns before you can get them to start uh, giving any current to your to your transistors so uh, adjusting the current anyhow I hope I'm not too confusing here and let's see here uh, Yes, I've been through the idle current adjustment, and I think I've got just about everything here. Be careful of those errors on the schematic and uh, uh, label mislabeling of things. I guess that's it for now, guys. 73s and good DX.